everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jules. Today I have part two of my try on first impressions type of video. I did recently do one with more affordable makeup. Today's is gonna be a lot more high-end luxury type of makeup. So I have almost a full face worth of product here. I'm gonna be trying everything on for you and showing you how I created this look. And at the very end, I'm gonna to try to hold off all my thoughts till the end and give you my first impressions on all of these products. So if you'd like to see what all I have today and hear my thoughts on all of these products, go ahead and keep on watching. All right guys, I'm gonna jump right on into the eyes today. Prior to the eye portion, I have already prepped my face with all of the normal products that I use. If you're curious about what those products are, they will be listed down below, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull you in close and we're gonna get started on the eyes. All right guys, I've got you pulled in nice and close since we're gonna be doing some eyeshadow first. I'm going in to the Natasha Denona Mini Sunset Palette. Here's the outer packaging. This palette is not new, but this is definitely new to me. This is definitely one that I wanted to pick up because the shades in here look so beautiful. So first I'm going to start building the crease with this shade right here. Looks pretty light here on camera, but it does have a little bit more color in person. But I'm just gonna take my classic crease from Sonia G and I'm gonna start building up the crease. So that shade was definitely de deceiving in the pan because I definitely see it showing up here on my crease. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more to build up this crease even more. Going in for a third time. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the other side and then I'll be back for the next step. Next I'm going into this middle shade right here and I forgot to tell you what that first shade was that I did pick up. That one according to this is called Halo and next I'm gonna go into Dirty Mars which is this middle shade right here and I'm going to pop into that shade with my mini booster from Sonia G and I'm going to concentrate that right into the outer corner of the eye. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that same shade and move the color upwards a little bit more. Next, I want to go in with Apollo, which is this metallic gold shade right here. It looks like it may have some glitter in there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up on my soft shader and go ahead and work that right into the lid space. I'm gonna take my mini booster and just blend those edges together. Okay, I do want to come back and use the last two remaining shades in there for the bottom and the corner of my eyes but I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of my face before I do that. So I'll be back to do that in a little while. All right guys, for foundation today, I have an old one, but kind of a new one. So I have Giorgio Armani's Luminous Silk Foundation. I picked this up the other day from Sephora, and this is actually a rebuy for me. I purchased this from Nordstrom a while ago and got some pretty good use out of it, and I think it probably went bad, and I ended up throwing it out. But I remember this being such a great foundation, and so I wanted to pick this up again. This is what the packaging looks like. It's a frosted type of glass bottle, and then it does have a pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good shake, and now I'm gonna go ahead and apply this onto my face. And I'm just gonna use my e.l.f. Total Face sponge. So it's already been dampened. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this all over the face, and then we will be back for a new concealer. If you're not familiar with this one, this is a semi-runny foundation. Not super liquidy, but it is a pretty liquid foundation. I picked this the shade 10. I couldn't remember what shade that I was in when I had this before. So judging by all the shades that were in store, this one seemed like it was gonna be the best. I forgot my color corrector, so we're gonna do without today. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and just blend this in. Okay, 
So this area right here is where I typically like to go in with a little bit more. So I added just a little bit more in that area. Okay, next I have this little mini sample from Becca. This is the Becca Ignite Liquefied Light Highlighter. They recently released these in a few different shades and this one Sephora had in a sample version. So I wanted to try this one out. Okay, that looks really pearlescent right there. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it for you right here so that you can see what it looks like swatched. It's pretty blinding. So I'm literally just gonna take this tiny little dot that I have and work this in just to some of the high points. I think I could stand for a little bit more. Next I have this new concealer from Giorgio Armani. This is the Luminous Silk Multi-Purpose Glow Concealer. Got my shade in, this, in the shade number eight. The packaging looks pretty similar to the foundation. It's a pretty nice size for a concealer. You have your typical doe foot here, pretty good size doe foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and disperse this along the usual areas of my face and we'll see how it does. I'm gonna start on one side first and blend it out. Coverage is pretty light there on the initial application. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I almost feel like a cooling sensation. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my entire face. I can't decide if I wanna use my Pretty Vulgar Powder or my Milk Blur and Set. I think I'm gonna go in with my Pretty Vulgar. I'm gonna go ahead and set my under eyes and everywhere that I added concealer with this powder. And then I'm going to go ahead and set the rest of my face with my Sephora baked powder that I've been loving. And then I will be back for some more new products. Okay, next up I have a new bronzing powder from NARS. And I say new because you guys know when this initially launched back in, mm, it was probably like March, April maybe, NARS, release these matte bronzing powders. They had four or five shades that they released, but the last shade, which is called Kirimba, is how I think that you would say that name. This was the darkest shade, it was never available. I never found it on NARS, never found it on Sephora, never found it at Nordstrom, Ulta, I checked everywhere. No one had that darkest shade. And that was the case from the initial time that it launched. So I knew that it couldn't have sold out that quickly. I still don't know what the story is behind it, but I know that that shade was not available initially, but it is now available. So initially the shade that I got is Samoa. I really love this. I use this quite often. And then the new shade finally launched and I definitely wanted to check this out because Initially, I would have picked the darkest shade. That's typically what I always do. So here's the darkest shade right here. And then pairing it up to the other one, I didn't see a drastic difference between the two. I feel like the darkest one has slight, slightly more of a red undertone to it, whereas Samoa is more of a neutral undertone. I'll go ahead and swatch these both so you can see the difference in the two. Okay, so this shade is the one that I have. This one is Samoa. And it looks, when you, when you look on my skin, you can barely see it. You see it a little bit there, but it actually does show up on my skin. And then the brand new one, and I should, should have showed you on my finger. This one right here is the brand new one. And then this one is Samoa, what's left on my finger. Okay, so there's the darkest shade right here. So this bottom one is the new one, and then this is Samoa. So there's a slight difference. Okay, so to apply this, I'm gonna go in with this brush that I love from MAC. This is the 140 
SES. It's a nice fluffy fan type brush that I feel disperses the product really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this newer bronzer into my skin. I think I need to tap that off. It looks like I picked up quite a bit. I'm gonna start applying that right here. Definitely I think shows up more on me in the summertime with darker skin. Same great formula. Loving this one. I'm gonna go ahead and just use the product that I have left and go down the sides of my nose like I typically do. Beautiful bronze on the nose. I'm gonna go ahead and go down the center of my nose with what's left on my sponge just to make the highlight more pronounced. And then I'm gonna continue working this onto the other areas of my face, down the jawline. Okay, moving on to the next new product. I picked up the Orgasm X Cheek Palette from NARS. Look how beautiful this packaging is and I love this little rubber enclosure that it came with or this rubber fastener, I guess is the name. I don't know what to call it, but I thought that was so cute. Here is the palette, really pretty. Not the typical palette that NARS usually comes in. This is more of a plastic case as opposed to this having that velvet feel to it. And then here are the shades right here. I feel like my lighting throws off the, the colors of these so badly. Okay, so this one is the highlighter. This one is the original Orgasm. And then this one right here is the Orgasm X shade which I think is so pretty in person. It's kind of a bright pinky terracotta shade. It's really unique, very different. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this highlight all over first. I also have this glow stick that I wanna use for Marc Jacobs. Not sure how to incorporate all of these in. Maybe I'll just go in with this on my cheek. So I'm just gonna go in with my Anastasia A23 and I'm gonna pick up this highlight. And I'm going to start working this one into the skin. That is, looks pretty glittery right off the bat. Once you work it into the skin, it doesn't look so chunky. I'm going to go ahead and work this onto the bridge of my nose in the tip of my nose. Well, let me go ahead and work this blush into the middle and then I'll, I think I'll try the Marc Jacobs on my forehead. I've never really been crazy about the plain orgasm blush. Um, I, I didn't feel like it showed up on my skin ever, but I have high hopes for this one. Yes, I love that. Okay, now this glow stick from Marc Jacobs. I did show this in a haul. Looks kind of like a deodorant. I did mean to swatch the Orgasm X palette for you. I am gonna do that. There's the highlight swatched on my arm. I'm trying to decide how to apply this. I'm actually just gonna apply a little bit more there. And then I'm just gonna go with the other side of my sponge and pick that up on my sponge and then work it into my forehead. I kind of want to just take it with my finger and go right on the skin to see what it does. I was able to work that into the skin really easily with my finger. And then I'm just going to take my sponge to smooth it out. That truly gives you that, just a glow. No glitter really. It's literally just a glow on the forehead. That's really nice. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and pull you back in close and we'll finish off the under eye and then we'll get on into mascara and lips. Okay, so first I'm gonna take my flat definer from Sonia G and I want to go ahead and build up the inner corner of my eye 
And I want to go into this sparkly shade right here. This one is called Halo. So I'm just taking this into the corner. I don't know why, but this side seemed like it deposited more. And then I'm just going to take what's left and work it on up to that inner corner. I'm actually going to take my classic crease and go into that first shade again. I want to carry it into this inner corner of the eye. It just looks dark right there. So I want to bring some light to that. Now I want to go ahead and take my flat definer. I want to take this cranberry color right here. I think this is called Sunbeam and it's just this pretty cranberry metallic color. I want to work that right into the bottom lash line. I probably should go ahead and line my eyes first. Okay, I don't know if this is going to look crazy or not, but I have these new Epic liners from NYX. I have this pretty orange shade right here. So I just swatched it for you right here. I did it right here, but you can't really see it because it's on top of the highlight. But I have this metallic orangey shade right here. I kind of want to go into my waterline with that one. Now you can barely see that, but I think it adds a little something to the look. My friend Kayla, who is also here on YouTube, I initially saw her using this shade right here on her waterline and it looked so good and it lasted all day long. Um, this one is called Magenta Shop, but the one that I just used is called Orange Zest. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this cranberry shade right below that. That cranberry shade actually looks really orange. It doesn't look as cranberry as I thought it would, but still pretty. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do my eyebrows off camera and then I will be back for a new mascara and a new lip. Okay, we're getting down to the home stretch. I want to go ahead and try this new mascara out on camera. I did try this out already once. This is a sample that I received from Ilia. This is the Limitless Lash Mascara. Here is the wand. So this wand is very unique. It has this comb looking side on one side and then a thicker side on the other side. I've already curled my lashes. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. Okay, I think that the volume and the length on this is insane. And I really feel like the wand on this one really combs through your lashes, separates everything really nicely, and just gives you instant volume and length. It's so good. I mean, it's just, it's instant. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the bottom lashes as well. I haven't tried it on the bottom lash, but I'm curious. Okay guys, I am ready for some lipstick. I'm going to be using a lip liner from Essence. This is not high-end, but it's just what I have here. I am going in with a high-end lipstick though. This has a little bit more purple in it than I thought it did. When you look at the packaging, it doesn't look that purple, but I think it's going to be okay. The lipstick I have is from Givenchy, and this is called the Rouge Interdeet lipstick and I have the color fuchsia. I wasn't sure how this color was going to go with today's overall look but I want to see how it looks first and if I need to change it out I definitely can. Here is the lipstick packaging. So luxurious. Love the packaging. And then it has this little ribbon that you pull to pull the lipstick out and this is the shade. I thought that this shade was so beautiful. It has their logo that's imprinted into the lipstick. Yeah, I wanna go ahead and pair this, and maybe since it's in conjunction with this lip liner, it won't look so off. That glides on so easily. It's such a beautiful formula. 
Okay, so this is gonna do it for the makeup. I definitely need to go do something with my hair and add some earrings, and then I will be back to give you my thoughts on all of these new luxurious products. All right, guys, here is the completed look. I ended up staying with the lips because I feel like it goes with the whole sunset type of theme, especially with this palette right here. I feel like I use this as the base for my color theme today. So I feel like everything goes together. I do like the lips for that reason. All right, so let's go ahead and get into all of these products so I can give you my first impressions on all of these products. First off was the Natasha Denona Mini Palette. I have quite a few of these in my collection and these little mini palettes do not disappoint. I feel like they are targeted for a specific color, theme, or story and you can stick with that palette for that theme. Now, even though this is the look that I got out of today's palette, I feel like you still have a variety of options with the colors in this palette. You can go with monochromatic looks with these tones. You can create more nude looks, and you can definitely go bolder with incorporating this cranberry shade all over the lid. So I feel like you have a wide range of different looks you can create, even from this little mini palette. So this did not disappoint. I had in my mind what I knew I could expect from this palette, and this palette definitely delivered on my expectations. So that one is definitely gonna be a keeper. Moving on to foundation. You guys heard me explain how this one is not brand new to me. I have used this before, I just never restocked on it. And so using it again, it just brings me back to how beautiful I remember my skin looking with using this foundation. I really, really love this. I love the name of it, Luminous Silk. Just sounds like something you would definitely wanna have on your face. And I feel like the look definitely resembles that of a Luminous Silk. So I think that this foundation definitely has that medium to full coverage buildable aspect about it. I feel like you could even go sheer with it if you wanted to, but one that you can definitely build up without it looking cakey. So I'm really glad that I was able to pick this up and restock it for my collection. The Luminous Silk Concealer was definitely a new one for me and so far so good. Um, I feel like even though it doesn't have the coverage as some of the other concealers that I have and use, I feel like the luminosity of it really brightens up that under eye area. So like, I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell on camera, but I always have this darker area right through here. And I feel like I could definitely use more coverage for that darker area, but I definitely can't see it here in the viewfinder. I just feel like it looks really luminous really bright underneath the eyes, even though it's not a full coverage concealer. This, if I remember correctly, is probably more of a light to medium. Let me pull this up on Sephora's website so I can tell you more about it. So this is said to be a multi-purpose concealer that highlights and conceals while providing up to 24 hours of hydration and comfort. This has medium buildable coverage and a flawless radiant finish. I would have to say that claim of flawless and radiant definitely came through. I definitely see it under my eyes. I don't see where it has creased since I've had it on. I feel like it looks really flawless. I really like it. Okay, I think the next new product that I had was this NARS Matte Bronzer. This, I think, had so much more bronziness to it than the Samoa powder. Now, the Samoa powder may just not show up on me as well as it did back in the spring because I definitely do have more color to my skin now than I did have in the spring. That could be why this, I feel like, has more of a pop, but I do definitely feel like it is a deeper tone as you saw from the swatches. So I really love the tone and the bronziness that this gives to my skin. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I am gonna keep both. I think both are beautiful. I think that if anything else, I can definitely keep the other one for a softer bronze look for now and more of a deeper one when I do get lighter. And then I could definitely use this one for more of a sculpted look 
even when I am lighter. So I will be keeping both. I think that they are both beautiful. I think the formulation is really nice. I think it blends into the skin so beautifully and the tone is just beautiful. I love it. Next up is the Orgasm X palette from NARS. I think that this is so beautiful. And you know, I'm not disappointed that I can't use this middle shade right here because when I compare prices, um, I like the fact that I have this blush and this highlighter for the price of just the one blush. I think the comparisons, I don't mind the cost of it. Let me just look it up really quick. So the regular NARS Orgasm X blush itself is $30. And then when I look at the palette, the palette is $42. So for 12 more dollars, I at least get the use of that highlighter in the palette. So I'm not mad at not being able to use that one shade in the middle. And next time I may actually swirl my brush around in both of these blushes just to see what kind of an effect it gives me. But I know that I love this Orgasm X one by itself. I think that it looks really beautiful on the cheeks. It also has that little bit of a glow to it that I don't know if my camera is gonna pick up or not. And then the highlighter is definitely beautiful as well. I didn't get to swatch this for you earlier. That is what it looks like on my finger. Look at how reflective that is. That is so beautiful. And then look at this liner, not to get off topic, but this liner that I swatched for you from NYX. I've already washed my hands twice with soap and I've gone up as far as to try to remove this and this is not budging. Just a side note, there's the swatch for the highlighter, really beautiful. And then there is the Orgasm X shade. That is what it looks like swatched right there. And then just for kicks, I'll go ahead and do the regular orgasm blush right here. You can definitely see why this one would not show up on my skin. It's more of a highlight for me actually, whereas this one is a little bit deeper. So those are those swatched. I think that this palette is gorgeous. I'm really glad I picked this up. And then the Marc Jacobs highlighter, this is called the Spotlight Glow Stick. I really like the formulation of this. I like that it's so easy to apply to the skin. It doesn't mess up the foundation or anything like that. This is over top foundation and powder products. And I think it just gave my forehead this beautiful glow. I'm really excited to see how it applies onto the cheeks and everywhere else where I normally apply highlight. But I did wanna incorporate both highlighters in today's video. So I love both highlighters. I think that they both look good. Whereas this one has a little bit more color and dimension to it. I think this one is more of just a clear glow is how I would describe it. So I love both formulas. Um, this Marc Jacobs is very unique in that you can work it on top of everything and it not disturb anything underneath. So I really like the glow of that one. Okay, next up I think is the Ilia Mascara. This little sample that I picked up from Sephora with some of my perks, with some of my points, I was able to try this. I think this mascara is amazing. It gives me that instant drama and length. I think this one gives me more length than drama. It doesn't thicken as much as some of my other mascaras, but I think it still does such an amazing job and it's so quick because of the applicator the comb and the brush combination really allows you to comb that product through the lashes and really work it into those lashes to give it this amazing effect. I also used it on my bottom lashes. The bottom lashes I feel like could be built up more with some of my skinnier mascaras. Um, the one I typically have been using now is the one from Wet n Wild. This one just has a longer, skinnier wand and I think that that really allows to grab those tinier lashes underneath. I really think I like this Ilia one for the top ones, not so much for the bottom. I feel like I can get some more drama and um, more definition with a skinnier wand, but I love it for the top lashes. Okay, so I know that this liner was not high end. This was a low end highlighter from NYX at Ulta and this liner is amazing. I picked up three more 
in this line and I'm so excited to be able to use the other ones because I'm looking at my waterline. That orange has not budged one bit. And like I said, here is the liner right here. I've already washed my hands twice and gone all the way up here to get that liner off and it did not budge. So I'm really excited about the staying power of these liners, amazing liners. And then lastly is the lipstick, this one from Givenchy. So beautiful, the formulation on this one is so, so nice. Instant pigment and the formulation is one that's not drying. It looks almost like a gloss, but you have that opacity as well. So I really love the formulation of this. This is really similar to these LA Girl ones that I've been loving. Really similar formula, but I really like the tone of this one. Love everything about it. There's this one from Becca that I did want to talk about as well. This is called um, the Liquefied Light Highlighter. Okay, so I think these are called Ignite and the shade that I have is Passion. I really did like the way that this went on as well. I'm also interested in trying this on top of foundation and powder to see how it works with those two. So I really love how Sephora enables you to try out products with your perks or even with the little samples. So I'm really glad that I was able to try that out without buying the full size one, which I think is like 35 or upwards of 40 maybe. Anyway, yeah, that is a really nice liquid highlighter as well. So I think that wraps it up for this video. I had a lot of high-end products here that I did want to try out for the first time. And so overall, I don't have a bad thing to say about any of these products. I'm looking over everything. Everything was amazing, which is so unusual for me. Lately, I feel like everything new that I try out doesn't work. So I'm really glad that I was able to get some really good first impressions out of these products today. I will leave you an update down below if anything has changed in the next few days, but so far, so good. Let me know what you guys think about this look today. Let me know if you've tried out any of these products that I tried out here today. And if you're new here and you enjoy videos like these, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you here. And I also wanted to note that in between the videos, if you'd like to see what I'm doing, also follow me on Instagram. I do try to post here at least twice a week, but if you're interested in seeing what I do in between those videos, you can check me out on Instagram as well. That's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, I love you guys, be blessed, and I will see you in the very next one. Bye.